Most people lie in the trading space. You need to understand that. You might think, why am I not profitable? But everybody else seems to be profitable, catching one to 10 risk rewards. That is false, okay? If we look at the numbers that we're gonna do in this video, you'll be able to see objectively that that is not the case. And that is very important to remember that your journey is separate from everyone else's. So let's define a successful trader as a retail trader for this video who has survived longer than two years trading and has made consistent returns risk adjusted, okay? Risk adjusted means minusing the spread, slippage, commission, all of the, you know, those type of things. And that, by the way, makes the amount of successful traders drop drastically, even with an edge. So the ESMA, which is the European Security Markets Authority, they want everyone to disclose, all the brokers to disclose, the amount of retail traders that lose money on their platform. And from that, between 74% and 89% of people on their platform lose money. And there's also a uh, sort of saying in the trading space where the 90-90-90 rule where 90% of traders lose 90% of their money within 90 days. And although that saying is slightly off, it's not too far from the reality. And even when trading prop firms where you're confined by the set of rules, the pass rate of a challenge, passing a challenge, is around 10%. So that's again, 90% of people fail, 10% of people pass it. And then you have to bear in mind, you need to make a payout. And you need to make a payout more than all of the costs that you've spent on challenges. Now you're starting to see how most of the people online are lying about this, right? They're lying about how much money they're making. And then when you take the advice from these people to jump in, go all in on trading, quit your job, you will find yourself in a worse position than you was previously, right? I always promote for you to still have a career so you can fuel, it takes money to make money. You can fuel money into this and if it doesn't work, okay. If, if it does work for you, even better. But at least you're not mentally drained for when you do lose and you don't lose experience by getting older and then you realize, ah, oh, maybe this doesn't work for me. And then you've got nothing to show for it as well with your skills either. You want to build skills while you're doing this. If you're a marketer, start a marketing agency while you're trading. It's fine. Trading doesn't take that much of your time. Okay. I know people say you have to grind and this and that. But yeah, you do. Okay. You need to understand the markets and the characteristics. But that doesn't take a lot of time in the day. You can look at the charts for two, three hours a day and that'd be enough. What are you going to do for the rest of the day? You should have a career or you should start, you know, an agency or a business or learn a sales or do something, right? Because that is going to help you fuel money into your investments and your trading. And we're going to talk about investments as well. In a bit. But first, let's talk about the main three issues why people are in that 90% of losing bracket. One is your competition. Of course, you're going to be against hedge funds, banks, people with high, with big pockets paying Equant traders to develop algorithms, right? To test multiple variations at once while you're just obviously a human and you you don't have that technical knowledge uh, Quant studied their whole life for. Um, so you can't really compete with those guys in that sort of sense. You can still find an edge, however, and that's retail trading is a thing and it is can be profitable, but it's just harder to get that because you can't test as much as a quant can. The second is the cost compounds, right? Prop firms are very sneaky with this. Their spreads, if, if a prop firm has bad spreads, you have literally reduced your probability of passing by a lot. Another thing is the cost, the trailing drawdown rules. All of these are meticulously designed. You need to understand these prop firms have brought in people to meticulously design these results so they win. It's sort of the casino model, right? And then the next is overtrading and obviously your psychology. That won't be intact. Another, again, if you don't have other income coming outside. When I started trading, the reason why I made six figures in payouts is because I have money outside of this, right? I do analytics and engineering, so I have more money coming in than that. And I also have made money in the crypto market as well through investing through my, you know, career and things like that. Now, I know I'm keeping it real like I always do on this channel, but I don't want to put you off. You can still make money. Like I just said, I made over six figures in payouts. Well, in the six figures of payouts, right? I only use extra profits that I get. If I'm up for the month, if I have a really good month, then I use the shaved off extra profits to invest into challenges, that type of thing. So I never eat into my own personal investments and savings, or right? I never pull out of my funds to fund 
a, a funded account, for example. You just got to make sure that you have an edge and you don't have too mechanical of an edge because then that's going to erode over time because the markets change, characteristics change. You need an edge that has a bit of mechanical features but also can adapt with the market. And you need to, you know, don't try and go so close on the lower time frames. I know some people are profitable with that, but we're not using outliers here. We're using what's the most probabilistic way. It would be the higher time frames, four hour, one hour and above to get your positions because then those data prints or candles have more data within them. The auction is more solidified within that sort of time frame. You, next time you hear or see someone saying trading is easy, man, think about this, right? Why the, the maths is not mathing. Why is everyone lying about it? I know why. It's because everyone's got this ego thing that they want to lie. They want to prove that they're making money. I know some people that claim to be the best traders and I've been out with them and they, they trust me, they're broke. They have nothing. I know people that work jobs that have way more money than a lot of these tra so-called traders. That's why I always say put investing ahead of trading. Invest into crypto, funds, stocks, understand the companies, PE ratios, things like that, that will help you and build more skills for you first. Then you can also get into trading as a sort of bonus side thing. And if it works out for you, then great. But if it doesn't, then you've still got a great set of skills in terms of investing. And investing is long term as well. That's how you build wealth. Notice how a lot of these traders, they're young, impressionable, they've got no responsibilities. They're 18 to 20 something. They're the ones that are all coming up everywhere, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. But in reality, will they be able to suffice providing for your entire family on that? No, you won't. So have an extra income, fuel it into trading, make more money, fuel it into investments, make more money, be smart with this, okay? Don't let anyone put you in a bubble. I do a lot of things as well. No one's put me into a bubble saying, you have to go full-time trading, you have to go or only in your career. You, you can do anything you want, all right? Let me just tell you that if we want to end anything on this video. Do whatever you want, whatever works for you, do it. And don't compare yourself with other people because a lot of people are lying on this space. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You got a bit of knowledge on the numbers. Um, and if you have, then drop a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.